Hello and welcome. This is a video in a series of videos focusing on the use of schedules and quantities in Revit 2014. In this video we'll take a look at four walls and we will uh, calculate areas and volumes and see how, for instance, placement of doors, how different profiles, how different layer heights and also how different wall joints as you can see it here, are affecting these quantities. As you see, we'll start out building a very simple model, 10 by 10s, and we will also tag them, and afterwards we'll do some of our investigations. So, I'll close down this project, and start a new project from scratch, based on a default metric template start a new project. We'll start out doing some simple walls, generic 300 millimeters. Draw a small square here and we want the outer boundaries of the walls to be 10 meters times 10. like this, and of course we could draw a few grid lines like this, and afterwards I will just tack the wall so we can um, see them and identify them in our schedules. I'll do that by going to annotate and say tag all walls like this, apply OK and inside these tags I would of course like um, a number to be seen so um, I can identify them and I'll do that right away by editing the family, editing the label, and remove this type mark and insert a mark. Okay, and load it back into the project, override existing version, and now I could say this is my wall 1, wall 2, wall 3, and wall 4. The next thing I could do is to uh, take a look at the 3D version of it and if I go to um, an elevation I also notice that my walls might be way too high so let's uh, take care of that marking all of the walls and setting them to go up to level 2 like this meaning that all of the walls are 4 meters high. So, the next step could be to write out a schedule and take a look at our, the quantities and what we'll look at is the category walls not the wall sweep, so just mark walls say OK and add some of the information you find interesting um, probably want a type as well and maybe a mark and maybe a length as well and let's see if we can organize them a little bit area probably want to move down up sorry length like this so we have type we have mark we have width length and width and we have area and volume and let's take a look at it and we might, sorry, want to sort by the mark, so we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. What we notice is that um, the length of them are not 10, meaning it's not the outer boundaries, but it looks like it's calculating from the middle of our wall, so if I mark one of those, I also notice that it's in the center of the wall. So it's 10,000 minus the width of the wall, 
So that gives uh, 9,700. I also noticed that it calculates uh, quite precisely, so it takes the length times the 4 meters and that gives the area. And if I want that a little bit more precise, I could of course go to my manage uh, project units and change the areas to um, two decimals. Like this, OK, and then I get a little bit more precise area. Having done that, it could be interesting to see if um, we could actually make a more precise um, calculation in case the wall consists of different layers. So before continuing, I'll make what we call a material takeoff. And in order to do that, we need different material assigned to our project. So the first thing I'll do is I'll mark all my walls. Here I got four of them. And um, I want to edit the type called generic four. Maybe I want to uh, rename it and we could call it uh, tree layers like this. And um, then we add a few more layers to the project. And let's say that the inner leaf on the interior side is 100. Maybe there's some insulation and maybe there's some bricks on the outside. So I'll just choose different materials. I'll take a brick for this one. I'll take uh, some default material for this one. I don't think there's any insulation in this one. But um, let's take a concrete of some kind for the load bearing part. So now I have three different layers and one of them is in the core boundary. So I'll finish this, apply it, OK. And now these ones should consist of three layers and if I turn off the cross view and go to fine view I'll also see the three different layers. Afterwards we go to material takeoff and choose a category walls and in this case we would like to add some of these material um, fields called material area, material mark maybe, um, and volume and add these as a minimum. Furthermore we might want to look at the type and some of the same parameters as we saw before and there should also be an area up here and add those and maybe move them up and down a little bit I think this will do it and I'll now say OK and I'll now notice that I'll just sort them after mark again that I more or less get the same quantities. So that means that again even though the three layers it still calculates the length of the wall from the center for each one of these three layers. So that's the uh, 9700 times 4 that we get into the material take off here. And of course some want to claim that that's not uh, precise, but um, that's the calculation rules um, that Revit is using. I will jump back and take a look at uh, my wall schedule and I'll start out modifying wall number one. I'll go to my 3D and wall number one should be this one and the first thing I want to take a look at is what happens if I um, put in doors like this one and maybe also a window of a certain size does that affect my wall schedule 
and of course we notice right away that uh, it got around three square meters three and a half square meters less um, and that is um, precisely the area of the um, walls and the windows opening areas meaning uh, from the outside of the joint um, depending on how the uh, doors and windows are modeled. The next thing we'll take a look at is uh, wall number two and here I will try to edit the profile. I will um, do a small cutout like this and I'll finish it and I'll go to my wall schedule and I'll also notice that it got a lot smaller um, so it looks like for sure that it's subtracting the area okay now we can follow along the next thing I want to do is to modify um, some of the layers meaning that I'll go to my edit type I will edit the structure and now I wanna for instance extend the outer leaf here of bricks in order to do that I need to go to the section I need to modify and then I zoom in a little bit and now I should be able to unlock this one and these one are still locked so I'll say OK to this and apply that OK and now I notice that I should be able to have two arrows and I should be able to drag one of them up a little bit and what you also notice is that it calculates for the entire wall the uh, maximum surface area you can say so this got um, a little bit higher and because of that um, the total area got bigger and you probably could also see in the material takeoff that if we go to layer 3 here the areas are exactly the same the last thing I want to show you is a wall joint between wall 3 and 4 so I think I'll just jump to my floor plan 1 and then I'll look at different wall joints between 3 and 4 here and maybe also see what happens in the schedule at the same time so I will go to wall join I'll notice this square around the two um, walls that intersects and I can now see different ways of joining the walls I can scroll through them and um, there's also a function here called a meter that looks something like this but for both of these solutions I'll say that's very rarely how a building is being built in real life but you notice definitely that they have an effect on the um, square meters so I'll just jump back and forth a little bit between the different solutions sorry the bot solutions here um, and you'll notice up in the schedules that they are changing depending on um, how they are joined and that's of course because they are calculated not any longer from the center but maybe further out a similar effect you will get if um, you don't use the wall joint but disallow some of the joints here and um, allow the walls to be connected for instance like this this also definitely have an effect on the length of the walls because they're now not being calculated from the center of the intersection but from uh, from here okay so to uh, round this up um, when using quantities and schedules it's a good idea to first of all uh, make sure that as long as you are modeling you also uh, understand what quantities and how they're calculated um, in your schedules so after having done a little bit of modeling a few walls
it's a good idea to uh, create a schedule at the same time and follow along and see how they change based on uh, how you change the model. Okay, I'll end for now, but in upcoming videos I'll do similar tests with floors and roof components. Okay, goodbye for now.